concepts in nailing. Uh, yeah, so we have been through this uh, four principles of management. Uh, the first one was reduction. So we have completed that. And second one, we are moving on to stability. In stability, we'll be discussing nailing this week, plating next week, external fixator uh, next to next week, and maybe some uh, other forms of uh, stabilization uh, a week next to that. So this is just regarding the concepts. The main talk of the principles in nailing is already uh, there live on the app. So there we can see the history and uh, some other points, mo mostly from uh, exam point of view, right? So this is from understanding point of view is this particular talk. So in this presentation, we will see uh, number one, what are the generations of nails? So very often asked question in theory and practical and even otherwise we need to know this. Then we will see concepts with regards to reaming and uh, what is the understanding as of today. <clears throat> what is the working length with respect to a nail? What is static and dynamic locking? And uh, what about the role of dynamization? When, how, if at all? And polar screws and some recent advances with respect to nailings. Okay. So, uh, like what Dr. Roy told, whenever we see a diaphyseal fracture, especially in the lower limb, the uh, first and foremost implant that we always think of would be an intramedullary interlocking nail in the current generation. So uh, it has more or less been a gold standard, uh, giving excellent results across across the world, across the globe, across all the hospitals, no matter which part of the world we are doing it in, as long as good principles were followed, uh, nailing is giving good results. So what are the advantages we see of a uh, nailing with respect to most other types of stimulation is that we preserve the soft tissue envelope especially in the fracture zone as well as in the zone of injury. So uh, in almost all cases, the nailing is done from a zone remote that is away from the main fracture zone or the zone of injury. So uh, the soft tissues to a large extent is undisturbed, uh, which has already been damaged because of trauma, but we as a surgeon are not going to disturb it anymore uh, further. So this preserves the extra blood supply. Uh, we know and we have learned that nailing gives relative stability, no matter how much uh, locking bolts we put in, but that is relative stability, so it yields with callus, secondary bone nailing. And since this is a load sharing implant, load sharing means the moment we put in the nail, uh, from the immediate uh, time after that, after the post-operative period, uh, the moment the patient loads the joint, the, the limb, the loads will be shared equally between the nail and the bone. Okay, so this is what is a load sharing concept. Visa is a load bearing. Load bearing is usually referred for a plate in which the implant takes the entire load and the bone doesn't take any load. So this is a load sharing. So it is much easier for both the bone as well as the implant to just share the loads within themselves and allow the patient to uh, do most physical activities in the immediate post-operative period. So we can allow early weight bearing uh, provided we do it well. And uh, in almost all cases, we do not require any external bracing once a proper nailing is done. And all of this will allow us to rehabilitate our patients faster. So by doing a proper nailing, we can follow all the principles of getting a good reduction, functional reduction in diaphyseal fractures, what you have seen. We're able to stabilize it well. We, we preserve the blood supply just by the default mechanism of trying to insert the nail from a remote area of the zone of injury. And then we can uh, rehabilitate them early. So all the four principles of management of fractures are followed uh, in this particular method. So uh, when you're talking of generations of nail, there are uh, three generations as per most books, only current last few uh, literature is giving a fourth generation also. So let me just uh, specify what is that. The first generation uh, nails is a typical example will be a K nail, which is just an intramedullary device without any locking options. In the second generation's nail, we had the nail with locking options in one plane, right? So it is from lateral to medial or medial to lateral tibia and femur respectively, uh, but one plane of locking bolts. And in third generation nail, we had a multiplanar option uh, of locking bolts. So we had uh, say an anterior to posterior or going uh, cephalomedullary or even at different angles, right? So one was a strict lateral to medial, one was from anterior antero, antero lateral to posterior medial that way. So any different planes, more than one plane of locking options is a third generation nail. So first generation without interlocking bolt options, second generation with locking bolt options, but in the same plane. And third generation, we have multi-planar locking, interlocking options. So that is three generation of nails. What exactly is the fourth generation? Fourth generation is anything uh, added on to the third generation of nails. So that is uh, specifically few things. So it is antibiotic eluting nail, 
ओके और सम सेंसर टेक्नोलॉजी विच शोज द रेडिएशन और अलाउस अस टू इंटरलॉक इट और इवन सेंसर टू नो द चेंजेस इन पीएच एंड टू एसेस हीलिंग आल्सो सो दिस इज द रिसेंट डेवलपमेंट दैट हैज बीन हैपनिंग दैट वी हैव सेंसर्स इंप्रेग्नेंटेड विद इन द इंप्लांट ऑफ कोर्स नॉट एट अवेलेबल फॉर कमर्शियल एक्टिविटीज इन इंडिया हियर uh so the thing is we can know the local ph happening number one number two we can know the loads happening so we expect the healing to happen say in two months three months four months and uh, then the bone will start taking the entire loads and the implant will not bear any more loads so if the in say three months four months down the line even then if the implant is still bearing the loads even without an x-ray we know that the bone is not healed so uh sensors are impregnated within the implant and that gives a real time load uh, stress strain curve of that particular uh, forces that are occurring across the implant and which can be accessed uh, via a mobile or 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 a desktop and the surgeon who has done the then the nailing can really see whether the implant is slowly giving off the loads entirely to the bone or it's just taking continuously bearing the loads so if that is the case uh, that it is bearing the loads continuously and the bone is not taking the loads that means the bone is not healing properly appropriately and the surgeon can intervene pretty early so there may be some gap at the factor site or it may be a biological issue means the bone is not healing so bone grafting or some augmentation can be done pretty healing so something extra to what is already there is a fourth generation nail uh the next concept comes is what about reaming so in simple words as of today as thing stands all nailings of lower limbs has to be a ream nail okay so there is absolutely no contraindication of a ream nail so no matter what fracture type what fracture pattern open or closed patient has other uh, injuries including chest and head injury even all of these the dictum is that we have to do an appropriately reamed intramedullary nail okay so if you go into the history of uh, reaming reaming was um uh, was propagated by kuncher uh, for his nails so there was handled reamers now we have the mechanized reamers uh, and when we see uh, how solid nails uh, the unreamed nails came into effect was that number 1 theoretically the, uh, it reduced the blood